The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Ustros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me Leighton Blaschko of BSF. How's it going today? It's going great, Kara. So we're standing in a very windy field. However, uh, I mean, we're in Alberta. What else can we really expect this time of year? But uh, we're here to talk about fall soil fertility and especially when it relates to 4R nutrient management. Now, as we know, 4Rs are the right source, right rate, right time and right place, yeah. I believe. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate a bit on those 4Rs? Sure, I think I can. I mean, I uh, by my no means am I the fertility expert, but I think, you know, when you're thinking about canola, uh, you know, I'm a, 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 an agronomist working with canola and uh, establishment of canola and ho helping a lot of different farmers and retailers and agronomists across the West. Our whole group does this and we, you know, the whole package of agronomy is important and fertility is just one small piece of the puzzle. So as you mentioned, it's uh, fall, it's windy. It's kind of got that feel of fall, a little cool a little cool uh, nip to the air right now um, but that's the time that we want to start considering a lot of decisions are being made and you want to make uh, some important decisions about uh, as you said for our fertility or your fertility plan so um, that's the time so let's start with the first one uh, right rate do you want to talk a bit about that yeah well I think you know there's been more and more spotlight put on um, putting your fertilizer, the right amount of fertilizer in the field or on parts of fields um, and on every field maybe being a little bit tweaked or different. Um, so certainly the right rate uh, to determine this, the key and that's probably where October time frame comes in would be to maybe look at some soil testing. So I know that a lot of places, a lot of people are doing that right now. They're going out there, there's often geo-referenced sampling. So every year you're sampling in exact same places on those exact fields so that you're building a bit of a benchmark and you're able to track nutrients uh, over time. So uh, soil sampling is, you know, gotten pretty elaborate. I think some of the trends or some of the things that have stayed the same for a number of years, which are good fundamental things are doing soil cores at multiple depths. So some, sometimes you want to do a couple of depths, sometimes you want to do three depths. So maybe the top uh, zero to six inches is uh, where the start, that's a key part piece of the puzzle. And then going either six to 24 or six to 12 and 12 inches to 24 inches. That's, uh, you know, you want to be able to know what is the amount of fertility that you have, what are the nutrients you have. At, at each of these depths. So that's the rate puzzle. We can, we can get that rate piece figured out. Soil tests can be analyzed, decisions made, and uh, the rate can be decided on as to what's the best economical rate because we all know with you know, fertilizer prices being where they are, you only wanna put as much as you need. And, and now looking at soil sampling, it how far into the year can we be soil sampling? Is, is it too late to be doing that now? No, it's not uh, too late to be sampling. Now is the time to do it, actually. When it's too warm, you haven't, uh, it's not uh, quite the right time to do it. See, this guy even agrees with me. <laughs> He's wanting to talk about the source of fertilizer, not the rate. So, but back to the question about is it too late? It's not too late. Once the soils are starting to cool, that's when it's the proper time to start evaluating and you uh, are then able to make some proper decisions and the uh, labs are able to analyze it for and give you a good indicator of what you have. Now as this cow in the background really wants to talk about source, uh, right source, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, so I guess that's one of the other uh, four R's is what's the right source. So we know that there's a lot of choices of, uh, you know, of ability or ways that you can put the fertility on your, uh, on your, on your, on your land. There's dry fertilizer, 
there's liquid fertilizer, there's anhydrous ammonia for nitrogen source as an example, there's coated products, there's a, a bunch of technologies that are really advancing and then even, uh, you know, even manure. You know, we're talking about the cattle or we're joking about the cattle, but, uh, you know, manure is another very, very good source of, uh, of nutrients. And, uh, you know, I think considering what you want to use, what works for your equipment, what works for the logistics on your farm, uh, that's all, those are all keys that come into place with the right source. Okay, and uh, right time? Yeah. So the right time, I guess, uh, you know, there's, you want to look at what makes sense for your operation. A lot of producers are putting on um, all their fertilizer on at seeding. That is probably a good time for some producers, but sometimes that if you've got large volumes, so the rate is quite high, it becomes a logistical nightmare. And we know that sometimes logistics, most times logistics trumps everything. So broadcasting some nutrients might be an option for this time of year to take some workload or to take some uh, volume out of your air carts in the spring. So that's uh, a little bit about that R. And uh, last, last but not least, I believe the last one is right place? Is that yeah. where we're at? Yeah. yeah. So the right place. So where's the right place? Well I kind of alluded a little bit to uh, you know surface broadcast versus all in the in the with the drill. Well I think you know the key is each nutrient is going to be slightly different but you want to be able to again think like a plant and be able to make sure that you're able to think that where would that plant's ideal location be for that nutrient? And not only where do you want it, when you want it, but how does the plant access it? Is it does it need to have some moisture to move into a rooting zone? Some are mobile, some aren't mobile. So that's where you want to consider. You know, for example, nitrogen and sulfur are fairly mobile nutrients. Um, so you know, if they're they can be moved to the into a little bit into the soil profile to a rooting zone, and and plants can uh, take them up. So they can be placed in one place, whereas phosphorus is another example. Well, it needs to be closer to the seed or closer to those young roots when a plant, uh, canola plant as an example, is establishing so that it can access it because it's not a very mobile nutrient. So that place is pretty critical um, to make sure that when the plant needs uh, a specific nutrient that it can access it. And now how is keeping all these in mind going to help you going forward in the springtime by, by focusing on this in the fall? Well I think in the fall there's a little bit more time. So if you've made a decision that you wanted to broadcast apply some product, maybe the logistics of getting a custom applicator now are better than in the springtime. You um, can also, when you've done your soil testing now, you can plan for what nutrients you maybe need to purchase and what the blend needs to be. Maybe there's opportunity to take that product home or maybe you need to make a decision exactly as to how much N, P, K and S and so on you do need and what your exact blend is rather than waiting till the spring to make those decisions. So it's all part of the overall management, the holistic management of this, you know, the whole every acre or every square foot. And one other part about it is, you know, there's a lot of producers that are even moving toward uh, VR uh, for their fertility or variable rate applications. Now's the time you can have uh, maps made, prescriptions made, choices on exactly what that blend, how many tons of each nutrient you're going to need can be made. There's a lot more time now between now and spring to get every all the, you know, all your ducks in a row, if you will. Okay, anything else you'd like to add? I think uh, we've covered it, Kara. You know, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, this whole area of fertility and this time of the year, it's important. You know, there's more and more scrutiny on, uh, on where your fertilizer dollars spent and where your fertilizer is going, how you're utilizing it. So I think it's a timely topic. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you.